five of our Microsoft Dynamics 365 Deep Dive Series, Voice of the Customer. A superior customer experience has become one of the leading differentiators in earning the business of today's customer. Customer experience is about designing your processes for the purpose of meeting or exceeding customer expectations, thereby increasing customer satisfaction, loyalty, and advocacy. Before we get started, I ask that you please submit any questions you may have for today's presenter by typing them into the question pane of the control panel in the upper right corner of your screen. You may submit your questions at any time during the presentation, and we will address as many as possible during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to introduce Michael Hammonds, the Director of Customer Experience for AK Enterprise, Enterprise Solutions. Take it away, Mike. Great. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, so this is the Voice of the Customer presentation, part of the Dynamics 365 Deep Dive series, and a uh, really exciting capability that has been added into the Dynamics 365 suite of apps and uh, you know is, is really geared towards uh, helping you initiate your own voice of the customer uh, type programs. I thought it'd be good to start off with a couple of uh, 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 I guess statistics if you will to kind of help underlie what Jessica was just saying and really what you know why voice of the customer is so important particularly in these days. And I'd like to start most of you may have already heard about this uh, particular quote, but it's an it's a oldie but a goodie from Sam Walton, you know, and I, it's very true. There's really only one boss, and that's the customer, right? And they can fire anybody at any time and it'll walk away and go take their business elsewhere. So it's very important that you understand the, the, you know, the value of your customer and really how their perception is of you and your products and services. Um, Zendesk has done a uh, some surveys that says that you know if those customers do walk and actually it doesn't really even matter if they walk it, customers talk and they tell others exactly how they feel and they even found that uh, nearly 95 percent of business customers would share their complaints uh, with others so that's pretty huge more than in the consumer world where they might just kind of walk away and not say anything um, but the fact that a business customer is also kind of in that same uh, bucket of saying, you know, they will tell others if they had particularly a poor experience. You know, we want to definitely make sure that we uh, we really understand um, how they uh, feel about us. Uh, in a Bain survey, and this is a this one is a very telling one, and and uh, and it's actually pretty true from just some of my own. Uh, ad hoc type of uh, questions and surveys to some of the customers I in interact with. And their question was, what percentage of executives think that they, pro that they're, uh, that they provide their customers excellent service? And 80% of them said that they did, where the results of the surveys from those same customers of those companies actually found that only 7% of those customers actually felt the same way, right? Uh, so it's you know very I guess dangerous to think that you know and and fully understand what your customers are thinking if you're not talking to them, if you're not specifically asking them questions, if you're not polling them, if you're not providing surveys to them. Right? Um, another one, Gartner has found them, you know very similar type of things in that at least through uh, next year, Voice of the Customer Initiatives. Uh, they found that if you don't share that information internally, that uh, your customer satisfaction and loyalty measure scores uh, can decrease by 30%. So it's good not to just silo that information in one area, which is one of the challenges with some of the survey tools that are out there, like SurveyMonkey, and um, I think MailChimp does surveys now, and there's there's you know probably dozens, if not more, survey type applications out there. But they're siloed, right? And the only way you get to share that information with other people is by physically distributing a report. Whereas within this approach, it's actually embedded within Dynamic CRM. Thought I'd also uh, provide a few of the best practices that uh, are out there, and this will help you truly um, drive home your voice of the customer programs 
and experiences. And the first and foremost is to listen and act on your voice of the customer, right? You don't just want to do it, t take a survey and then not really act on it. Um, make feedback collection part of your routine, right? So uh, we have different touch points, right? After our sales engagement, there could be a touch point. After our consulting engagement, there be be a touch point where we send a survey. After somebody calls our customer support team, uh, we could send out a survey there. So it touches all aspects of the business. You can even think about it, even from a, from an accounting and AR perspective, right? How does our how do your customers perceive you when you send them an invoice? Right? Is it easy to read? Is it simple? Is it understandable? Um, you know, is it timely? Those types of things that can affect your different aspects of the customer's business as well. When you do get feedback, whether it's positive or negative, you want to take real and deliberate action. Uh, you definitely want to close that feedback loop, let them know that you received the information, unless, of course, you're doing anonymous, which that's a different thing altogether. Uh, and then more importantly, you want to tell the world. Um, you know, if you get really good customer service scores, you want to communicate that. That helps other people understand that, you know, they're not the only ones out there and that other customers feel that you provide great service. So as we said, this is all now part of the Dynamics 365 suite of applications. Uh, and as I've said before, if you've seen in my previous demonstrations, uh, it really is a game changer. And this is just yet another reason for it being a game changer. And so as we said, today we're going to uh, drill into voice of the customer. And uh, once you've, it is uh, one that you install through the Dynamics 365 admin portal. Okay, so it's not yet on Marketplace. It will probably be shifted out there at some point. Uh, but today, you go into the CRM Admin Console, where you then install your solutions, and, um, and then it will become available inside of your CRM application. And then it'll look something like this. Right? So uh, what we'll see here is you'll see a new section here called Voice of the Customer. You'll see these five little entities here. And then once you go into them, there's a nice little designer. And we're going to actually demonstrate that. So let's first take a look at what are some of the different survey types that are available. Okay. And there's quite a few. So I think this pretty much rivals any third party or any standalone um, survey tool out there. So uh, you know, even if you've got some relatively complex survey needs, which hopefully there's not too many, you know, one of the aspects of, of getting good responses from customers on surveys is to keep it short and simple. Right? But sometimes you do need to ask a few more detailed questions. Like, for example, after our vision conference, you know, we ask a little bit more detailed questions because we want to understand how customers feel about the sessions we provided. Do they have other ideas of different content that they'd like to see? So that takes a few more questions than you know, just uh, three or four. Right? So with that, you've got short answer, long answer, ratings, and that's a sliding scale or star scales, um, numerical responses. You can have the customers rank in order the different types of components, like you know, rank the order of importance from one to five of these five or six different um, um, services or products. Uh, net promoter score, which we're a big fan of, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Customer effort score, CSAT, smileys. You can even upload files. Uh, so some really great capabilities uh, that are available to us with the voice of the customer application. I want to briefly touch on net promoter score in particular. This one uh, is recommended. We highly recommend that if you're going to start surveys, you start here, especially from a customer satisfaction perspective. And it's also called uh, the ultimate question. So if you uh, do a search on the ultimate question or you do a search on Net Promoter Score, there's lots of information out there about uh, how this survey methodology was developed. And nice thing is, you know, unlike a lot of methodologies, it's very simple. Uh, it's one question, right? And it is the ultimate question. How likely is it that you would recommend us to a friend or colleague? And on that, there's a scale of 0 to 10. And so depending on the answers, you put these customers into different buckets, if you will. So anybody who provides a score of 0 to 6 is called a detractor. Right? That's an issue that you want to take care of immediately, right? That, there's a problem there, and you need to try and figure out what that is and go and address that problem. Okay. Um, if you're a 7 or 8, that's called a passive. And it doesn't really count against your score because they, they don't dislike you. They don't really, really like you. They're kind of just in the middle. They could be swayed either way relatively easily depending on 
their next set of interactions. So those are folks you want to you know, pay careful attention to, and I would say recommend you still want to go out and understand you know, why they gave you the score that they gave you. Then if you're a 9 or a 10, you're a promoter. Right? You love the company, and uh, everything's great, and those are the types of customers that are your references. Those are referenceable customers. So based upon your survey scores, you now can narrow down who's going to give you those great references. Right? And so the simple, what ends up, this scale ends up doing is it gives you a very simple number. So you, you subtract your percent of promoters minus your detractors. That'll give you a number uh, generally from negative, I think it's negative something to up to uh, 70 or 80 or something like that. It's, it's, it's a pretty broad scale there. But what's nice about it is it's a, now it's measurable. It's a number that you can rely on. It's a number that you know um, you can trace back to a customer. Um, and it's also a very flexible question. So, like, for example, you can say, how would you rate our customer service interaction, and would you, promote, and would you recommend it to a friend or colleague? How would you rate our project implementation on a scale of 0 to 10? So now you've got a consistent way to measure different departments um, using the same question and the same uh, response scores. So great, great way to be able to do those types of things. All right. Uh, so let's move on. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, these as well as we'll show you uh, kind of a, a, a big survey that's got all the different types of questions in it so you can get an, an idea of what those look like. All right. There's also something within the capability called routing responses. And it kind of is like what it sounds. It is uh, do something based upon a response, right? Um, so do I want to automatically send a notification uh, to the customer that we received your survey? Do I want to send a notification internally to somebody who uh, needs to take care of one of those detractors and, and respond to one of those detractors? Do I want to fire off um, a notification to uh, the executive team if you got some promoters, right? And you want your executives to, to you know, help share the love there, so to speak. Uh, those are the different types of things you can do. But you can also do things like show and hide questions. You can branch the logic. So if, depending on my answer to one question, I may not show the next question. I might skip to a different question because it's not relevant. Things along those lines that help you with the logic behind what you want to happen when a survey um, is uh, responded to. That's what it is. And oh, by the way, it also can fire off uh, CRM workflows to do those things. That's really what it's doing in the background. Whether you say, I want to send an email response to an external or internal person, uh, that's all done through the workflow, but it's point and click through uh, the uh, voice of the customer application and business rules. There's a few ways you can distribute the surveys. Uh, you can uh, link them directly to a customer, or you can also have anonymous surveys, which are also valid and valuable. Uh, you can send it in a workflow. So, for example, when a case is closed, automatically send up a survey. So now you've got something that you don't have to think about. It's all letting the system do that activity. And, uh, and then you can even set reminders to see if somebody's responded or not, things along those lines. Um, you can also use it in the campaigns and quick campaign section of CRM. And uh, you can also use, there's a little, basically it's a little uh, workflow that uh, will uh, allow you to do a survey invite. So this is great for if I want to have some of my call center folks ask the question directly to the customer, and you can log that information kind of on behalf of the customer. And that's a great way to increase the level of responses. So people tend to um, be more open to answering your surveys if there's another person on the other end of the line asking the questions versus it just getting it an email. Okay, So you can kind of dual uh, dual play them there. First send them an the email. If they didn't answer in a few days, you call them up and then you say, hey, you got a, you got a, a minute for a couple of questions, right? And then your uh, own internal people can put those responses in on behalf of the customer. Oh, one other way, you can also post them on your website. So they'll give you a little uh, snippet of HTML code that if you wanted to place a, a survey out on your website, then you can do that as well. So great for maybe a product page. Right, and you want to get more feedback on, on that particular product, you could have a, a survey specific to that product linked right on your web page. Okay. Uh, there are a few limits, but I don't consider them really limits at all, uh, you know, unless you're a really, really large customer that sends out lots and lots and lots of surveys, you know, like we're talking consumer products oriented. Um, so uh, 250 questions per survey, so I certainly hope nobody's out there 
uh, ever going to send out a you know 200 question survey, let, let alone even a hundred survey, uh, hundred question survey. Um, so it should be more than enough for any survey. Uh, 40 questions. There's a, something called a feedback survey. I'm not going to go into the details there, but basically it's a little more in-depth type uh, question and answer. Uh, 25 pages per survey. Again, I don't want to. You know, I would want to walk through a 25 page or 25 set of questions um, from uh, uh, any survey I get. Uh, and then there's also a maximum of 200 live published uh, surveys at any one time. So you might have maybe, you might have 300 surveys over the course of a couple of years, but you can only have 200 active at any of those times. And you can activate and deactivate them depending on your needs. Uh, but again, there shouldn't be any real need to have 200 different types of surveys. That's the bottom line. Uh, the other one, uh, 10,000 a day limit. Uh, again, most people are, are going to be well under that. Uh, tw it will only process 2,400 today, so they've got it throttled in the back end. So if you do send out 10,000 today, it might take a couple days for all the responses to get processed and back into CRM, so be aware of that. And then there is a maximum of a million responses uh, overall, but um, I believe you can actually also buy additional responses or um, you can delete the older responses and, and it'll uh, um, still count towards your million. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration. All right, so we're going to first go into my CRM here. And uh, right now I'm on a contact record, so let's do this. That's X out of that here for a second. There we go. Now we're full screen. Okay, so here's how you initiate a uh, survey. I'm just going to go into email. And within email, I've set it up so that I can easily blast this out via a template. So I'm just going to pick insert template. And which of my templates do I want? You can see here there's some pre-built ones that the solution itself will put in there for you. Uh, and then there's a multi-question one, and then here is uh, an NPS or Net Promoter Score survey. So let's start with that one. And you'll see here that it kind of pre-filled in the information, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll make yours a little bit cleaner there. But you'll see here that there's a, there's a snippet that you copy out of the solution area or out of the uh, survey area that you then paste into your template. Uh, but that's it. Once you're done, you just hit the old send button, and off she goes. And that will now go off into the background, and uh, uh, that survey will show up in my inbox in about a minute or so. Okay, let's go ahead then, and I'm going to send another survey. I'm going to just use Mark again, just to keep it easy here. But we'll go into activities. Uh, oh, here's the thing I'll point out while I'm here. Here you'll see that using that routing response capability that I talked about earlier, um, I actually put in the system to say set up a task for the owner of this record to let them know that the survey was going out and that is now a task on their to-do list. And then I see here where the two, the quick two questions was sent out, right? And if I expose that, that's then the survey that was sent out. So let's now go in, we're gonna send that other survey. And this time I'm going to pick my multi-service so that we can see what each of those looks like. So I'm gonna pick my multi-survey. Boom. And again, we'll uh, clean that up a little bit. And, okay. So these are demo purposes, so they're not as pretty as they normally would be. All right. So we sent that off. All right. So now let's go into my inbox, and we'll see here. There we go. I've got, uh, there's that first survey. Thank you for being an AKA customer. We're striving to meet your expectations. And click here to take the survey. Boom. So here we go. This is the first question. This is the ultimate question. How would you rate us on a scale of 1 to 10? Now, I also used some of the response capabilities, the routing response, to use some of that skip logic. Okay, so watch what's going to happen here. If I get a 6 or less, it's going to ask me one question. And if I go to the next page, it's going to say, it looked like we could do better. What can we do to improve the score you gave? Right? So depending on that answer, I can give them a different question. So let's go back 
and let's say, you know what, I'm going to go and jump to a 9 this time. And now you'll see that it is a different question. And in the voice of the customer parlance, that's a different page. So this one says, because you gave us a high score, you know, I'm saying thank you. We're working hard to meet your expectations. Do you have any additional recommendations? And I'll just say, I don't know, uh, more cowbells for the Saturday Night Live fans out there. And then hit submit. Boom. And you can either have them just have this little static page. You can push them to your home page. You know, lots of capabilities there to uh, be able to dress this up or push them to, you know, wherever you want to push them to. Okay. So let's go and we'll take a look at the second questionnaire. And the second questionnaire is just, again, a little different. We're working hard to ensure that uh, we're providing the best service. So, you know, assume this one's a longer one because this one was asking for, for more detailed information. So we're going to click this survey. And now you'll see a lot of the different types of survey questions uh, that are available. Okay. So you can see here, you know, put in your text, whatever you want to see. This one's a required question. So if I don't answer that and say I skip to this one and I try to hit next, it'll say, wait a minute, you know, you didn't answer the required question. So that one will just say just right. Let's go to our next page. Here's a little, you know, star one we can do. There's a little five stars. You can send, enter in dates. You can, if I try to enter in letters, like I'm typing on my keyboard, it won't let me. If I type in a number, boom, it'll let me do that. All right. Here's one of those ranking ones. So rank the order of importance by dragging and dropping or using the little arrow buttons. So let's just say, you know what? I think uh, services, consulting, training, sales, marketing. No offense to anybody on the list who's in any of those departments. That's just how that one's rolling out today. Uh, and then, how, again, there's another slider scale, and uh, I thought there was one, there is one more. I think it's on the next page here. There we go. Uh, so, again, another slider. You can have nice, big, huge buttons, right? So if you want to make it a little more fun, a little more friendly, you can say, yep, we're very satisfied. This is, you know, kind of great for people to just visually give you a clue. Actually, they start doing that in hospitals. Um, they give you a kind of a, a, a person that looked really, really happy and one that looked really, really sick, and they kind of progressed in between. Um, so maybe that's where that came from. I don't know, but uh, it's nice that you have those flexibilities. Uh, here's some grouping questions, right? And you can do a little flag. So, yeah, I think that one's worth a three, a two, a two, maybe another three. So good there. And then here's a grid of multiple ratings. So this could be on this survey. You know, is this good, better, best, the, the bestest, et cetera? So you can come in and allow multiple selections on those. We can then also have a little fixed sum. So this is kind of like rate, you know, up to 100 percent, divide this, uh, divide 100 by the ones that are most important to you. So, you know, maybe I like this one 60 uh, percent, maybe I like this one 30 percent, and maybe I like this one 10 percent. And again, you can kind of set it so that if it doesn't add up to 100, it'll stop, make, you, make sure that you put in the correct math. Uh, and then here's one of those upload file ones. So I can upload the file. Oops, you browse, you grab a file. So this is great. You can do things like put them on uh, your, uh, you know, for a customer service perspective. You can have this on a website, and they need to uh, just, you know, fill something out and also send a screenshot or, or send a report or something like that. You can do that, things along those lines. So real nice capabilities there. Just want to give you a quick overview of what those look like. So let's now look at uh, the responses in here. And we can go back to our CRM. And so we look at, here's our active surveys. So uh, let's just do uh, one of these here. So this is the MPS survey that we sent out. And we'll go in and look at how that was created. Okay. So the first page is just kind of the, the general setup, right? So we, we go in, we say, uh, what is the name of the survey? Uh, how do we want it to look? What logos do we want to use? Do we want to show that progress bar? You probably saw that. Do you want to show page numbers? So a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can add more information um, very easily just by updating this particular page, right? So uh, here's your sending to your home page, link to our privacy policy, and there would be the link to it. Here's a redirect once they're finished. I want them to go back to our home page. So there's a little link at the bottom. If they, want, if they have a question, they can click that. 
you know, just lots of capabilities here. But now let's go in and see how did we design the survey. And we go into the designer. And there's different uh, beginning templates. Uh, I've, I've heard in the next version there will be more templates so that you don't have to build most everything from scratch. Uh, so that you'll just be able to pick a template and then modify the template. Uh, but regardless, it's still very easy. So you can see here, I've got, um, this was that first question. So when they first hit that landing page, uh, this is the NPS, or the Net Promoter Score one, rank me zero to 10, right? And if I wanna change any of the text here, I can just go in and here and change the text uh, to whatever I need, right? Boom, easy editing. Here's the list of all the questions. So if I wanted to add, let's say, another um, set of questions, you know, maybe I wanted to have some smiley faces on here, I just simply drag and drop it over. And then I fill out another form that's kind of asking me what do I want these to be related to. So what are my questions? There, it's pre-filled those, so we're gonna go ahead and leave those, et cetera. And, uh, and if I don't wanna change anything, I'll just hit save and close. And if I want to look at, or if I want to get an idea of what that's going to look like, we can come into here and hit the preview button. And then that preview should show me the, uh, the net promoter score with the new question that I answered. Uh, let's try that again. And uh, give you, a, it's basically a preview there, right? So you, you can add some new questions, see what they're going to look like, and then um, tweak it to your desire. So there's my 10 questions, and then there's my smiley button type of questions, right? So simple, easy for me to see how exactly it's going to look. It is also mobile friendly. So if I hit this survey link and I'm on a tablet, it will reformat to the tablet size. If I'm on my phone, it will resize to the phone size. So it's per completely responsive is what they call that. So uh, all screen sizes are, are supported here. So that's another good thing. Uh, and then I can just close that and go on to the next one. So now notice here that here's my second page. Okay, so while the ultimate question is one question, you wanna follow that up with a second question. So it's really, which is why you saw in my subject, uh, two quick questions. First, give me a rating of zero to 10. And then second, give me a little feedback on why you gave me the score that you gave me. You know, If it's negative, I wanna know that. If it's positive, I wanna know that. And so that is the basis of your follow-up to the customer, right? So now you know what they scored you. You've got generally a little piece of feedback that they might say, I don't know, you know wanted the um, project done, you know, in an impossible amount of time, <laughs> and you didn't, you know, weren't able to do that. Something along those lines. It gives you the point of having a conversation now with the customer and drilling into the uh, issues of why they gave you a low score or help you understand, you know, some other areas that you might be able to exceed their satisfaction or at least meet that and, uh, and find out some other ideals for new products, new services, new ways of dealing with the customer. But what I said, so there's a second question. Notice here I labeled that detractor question. So if it's a zero to six, remember it, it, it did that branching or that shift logic, it's gonna ask me this one, looks like we could do better. If it's a nine or 10, I want to ask this question. So there's that better, oh great, looks like we're meeting our expectations. What else can we do for you, right? And then here's the end of the survey. So that's just the last page. And you can add additional pages here if you want, just hit this little add page button and you can add more pages, but again, you know, the, the purpose of Net Promoter Score in particular is you want high response rates. Traditionally, surveys have a relatively low response rate, and the majority of that is really due to way too many questions, too complex questions, and it takes too much time, too much effort, right? So the simpler you can make it, the more likely you're going to get more responses. And that two questions seems to be, you know, very key to getting super high response rates, okay? So now you see here that I added those uh, different uh, questions in here. Here I'll, I'll show you briefly the uh, response uh, routings that I talked about. And so these response routings you can see here, if it's a detractor response, do something. If it's a promoter response, do something else. So I'll open this up and you'll see that we have the ability to go in and link it to a particular survey 
and then whenever there is a detractor response, so the condition is a detractor response, which means less than seven based upon that question, what do I want it to do? I want it to send an email notice of a low score to you know maybe the customer service team or to management, whatever I want to send that to. And then I can add another condition here if I want to as well. You know, maybe add another task, low score, to the owner of that record and make sure that they follow up uh, with the uh, response to um, the detractor, right? And then if I go back, and let's take a look at the promoter one. Oops, uh, and that's kind of an oddity that once you go back, it kind of goes back to the original survey. But so we go to promoter response, and now you'll see that based on the answer to this question, if it's eight or if it's greater than eight, then show me, skip to the promoter question. So simple, easy logic to be able to build in, you know, somewhat similar to the business process flows, although not as pretty. I think it'll get prettier as they go on. That's going to be probably the standard, but, you know, it's still, it's it's very simple to learn. You know, once you've um, had a few hours of hands-on, you'll be a survey pro. All right, so the, let's see if there's another area here. Let's, oh, we'll go back to the survey. And uh, you can also have access to a dashboard from here. So the dashboard will show you your responses. And in this case, since it's a demo system, uh, there's not a lot of data there. But you can see your survey invites, your survey responses, uh, the scores that you're given, and, uh, uh, and then uh, average ratings. So uh, got some nice, decent uh, stuff right out of the box for you. And then because it is a part of Dynamics 365, you can tap uh, the power of Power BI, uh, which is another session, by the way, and um, pull in your uh, survey information, your voice of the customer information into a Power BI dashboard. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here's kind of a, another one that I'll show you. This one might actually have... Uh, some of the responses, a little bit more responses down in the in the charting area, and then we'll see what else we want to cover before we move on. And yeah, there we go. So you've got now some uh, additional responses uh, for that particular survey. Okay, so a few more anyway, not much. Now if we go into uh, the other areas, these these are going to show you all of your responses. So there's one section, one area for you to see. So you can see this one was sent to Mark. This one was sent to me earlier. There's an anonymous one that I posted on a website. Uh, there's the scores. You can see there's a detractor. There's a promotive. There's a there's a passive. So if you do use the NPS, it will automatically calculate uh, whether you're a detractor, a promoter, or a passive, and it will automatically calculate your score. So it's less, a little less math that you have to do manually. It's all right there built into the system. Okay. And uh, that's really it. So it's very clean, very simple, very easy. You know, there are themes. So you can have different colors and schemes to match your corporate colors and logos and all kinds of things. So you might want to have one theme for maybe trade show events, another theme for uh, internal customer things, another theme for... Um, you know, holidays, things along those lines. That's just where you upload all your images, like your uh, uh, your logos. You can also have images in the surveys themselves. So you can have a product picture, you know, snapshot of a or a screenshot of a product, of software, or, or you know, a, a, an actual physical device. So uh, lots of additional capabilities there to really make your voice of the customer sing from a user interface and user experience perspective. All right, uh, so I think that is really kind of covers the majority of, oh, there's one other thing I want to show you. Uh, the You'll notice here that uh, because it's part of Dynamics 365, it will very nicely and seamlessly integrate to the new relationship insights capability that's been available roughly since December in preview, but it's coming soon to a production. Uh, but you can see here, I sent the survey, so this was the one that was responded to. And notice here that it tracked the open, it tracked that I clicked that link, it tracked that I actually did a reply. So this is a great combination now, and you can kind of see the details here, open on a Win 10 device, there's the link that I clicked on, and there's the reply that I sent. Um, that, you know, really, I think, adds additional value, because now you got surveys, and now you have the ability to see 
was it opened, when it was opened, was it clicked on, all those fun things, and again, pull those into your reports um, so that you can have a lot more actionable information. Okay. Uh, and then here you can even do the same thing, set a reminder, or there's another one in here if, right before you send it. Uh, let's see, I think if we uh, did a new one, you'll see that you can actually um, post the uh, sending, you can schedule when you want the, the uh, send to go. And there's also part of uh, the new capabilities there, but we'll just go in, we'll create a new email. Now I am doing these from templates, uh, and that is one of the things that in order for it to be linked with the CRM record, you do have to send it out of uh, CRM in this fashion but a uh, small price to pay for having all this rich data and information in one system and not having to have multiple silos and import export data and all that fun stuff. But you can see here, I can say, I wanna schedule this for later. And as you use the system, it actually will begin to tell you when are the opportune times for those to be opened, right? So because it's able to now track opens and clicks, it can say, you know what? This person opens their emails more often you know, around lunchtime than at any other time. So it might suggest you send the survey at lunchtime so that you, again, will um, have opportunity to send or get better responses, right? And that's, that's the key, is you want people to respond. And while I said that, another great thing about the NPS program is your people who do not respond are in themselves an answer, right? Now, they're you know, they could technically consider them a passive because they, you know, they, they didn't feel compelled enough to answer the survey. But those should fall into your statistics so that you know people, you know, that there's, there could be another potential issue there, right, if there's some negative perception. Or they could just be too busy and they don't really, you know, feel like filling out a survey. But those are very important non-responses when it comes to the MPS um, system. So with that, uh, I think uh, we're going to open this up to a few questions, and uh, then we'll, we'll call it a wrap. So Jessica, okay, how are you doing? Uh, thank you, Mike. Um, so yeah, I have a few questions here. The first one is, is Voice of the Customer available for on-premise? Ah, it is available for on-premise customers. However, with Dynamics, CRM 2016, uh, the December update and above. So older versions, no, but as long as you're on 2016 and up, uh, you can actually install and run Voice of the Customer on premises. Great. Um, also, we have, um, can the surveys be manually completed by the end user? Yes, and that was that uh, survey invitation that I mentioned. So you can have your own person on the phone click the button that's in their name and that's near the contact record and it will then pop up the survey and you can kind of walk them through so the end user can answer the questions for them. So yeah, absolutely, you can manually complete those for the customers. Thank you. Another question we have here is, can I import existing survey information I have? Uh, that one is one we've had a couple of customers ask and so there's, yes, there you can use the data import wizard or some other tools if we don't want to use that, to be able to import uh, existing survey information into the system. Now, there might be a little manipulation that we have to do or cleansing to get them all into the right fields and buckets, but so far we've not seen any issues with uh, pulling in it, say, from a, you know, a, a MailChimp or a um, SurveyMonkey or anything like that. Great. And the last question we have here is, can surveys be used for internal employee surveys? Uh, that's a great question, and yes, so you can send those to your own internal folks, uh, as well as, you know, and I do highly encourage that, so you've now got one tool, again, that can do your external surveys, but can also do your internal surveys to your own employees to see, you know, how satisfied they are, you know, about your benefits or about just the company in general, so it's great. If you're going to do voice of the customer, you really should also incorporate voice of the employee as well. Um, so. Lucky with, uh, for thing for Dynamics 365 users, you get the two-in-one special with Voice of the Customer. Uh, so, okay, that's, uh, um, any questions? That's, yeah, that's all of our questions for today. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. All right, so just uh, closing steps, uh, actions that you might want to take. Uh, set up these 
components in a trial environment or in one of your uh, sandbox environments. That way you can get used to it. You don't have to touch your production. Um, we'll, we're glad to help you. Just give us a ring and we can walk you through that process. Or if you want to do a much deeper dive and really get into the nitty gritty, uh, again, calls for that and uh, we're more than willing to kind of help you take better advantage of voice of the customer inside your own CRM. So thanks everybody, appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Mike, and thank you everyone for attending today's webcast.